Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Umanchuk and you are watching my YouTube channel where I talk about outstanding vocalists and musicians from all around the world. Today I will tell you about how Russia loves to draw inspiration from Western creativity. The most shameless plagiarists and why it happens. Are there any cases to reverse plagiarism? So sit back, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Well, plagiarism is a very broad concept. Only a court can officially declare a certain work as plagiarism. This means that the rights holder must assert their rights to the song. But what if the performer or a hit song is unaware that their song has been stolen? This often happened during the times of the USSR, due to invisible iron curtain. Many artists had no idea what was happening on the other side of the ocean. Of course, in the USSR, there was great reverence for one's reputation, and various editorial boards and culture committees closely monitored what popular artists released. However, underground musicians began to emerge, especially in the later years of Soviet Union, who drew inspiration from their Western counterparts. They obtained their idols' records through difficult and underground means. For example, in Russia the heavy metal band Area became very popular and their early work was strikingly similar to the well-known western group Iron Maiden. And when I say strikingly, I mean very strikingly. Take a listen for yourself. Another example is the famous Russian singer and musician Viktor Tsoi, who started his creative journey by imitating the well-known bands The Smiths and The Cure at that time. Similarly, the once popular artist Igor Talkov loved to get inspired by Western music. And there are many more examples. This primarily happened because these Western groups and artists were unknown in the USSR. There was no internet back then, and nobody had any intention of coming to the USSR to thoroughly study Soviet music in search of any similarities. To be fair, it's worth nothing that many of these artists were very talented musicians and performers, and as their careers progressed, plagiarism was minimized or even completely eliminated. Moreover, with the advent of the internet, many cases of plagiarism become public, and some even ended up in court. But that's a different story altogether. Well, it seems that with the collapse of the USSR, the situation should have been resolved. But that was not the case. In the 1990s, in Russia became a time of rampant plagiarism and blatant mediocrity. And even now, things are not much better. Popular Russian artists like Morgenstern and Instasamka don't even hide the fact that they steal songs for more successful Western artists. Many of them are proud that nobody has even taken them to court. Бывало. Но у меня есть трек, который я прям с... Ты когда это делал, понимал, что это, ну, раскроют? Там интернет и все остальное. Самый популярный трек ты каши, никто не поймет, что я его... Да, конечно, просто... 
потому что, ну, что, какой-то трючок надо было сделать, сделал. However, cases of reverse plagiarism are not uncommon either. But unlike Russian artists, singers from the West often buy the rights to perform a particular composition. For example, this happened with the song of the Russian group Ruki Verkh, whose rights were bought by the famous German group ATC, and their song Around the World topped at the charts and became iconic. Sometimes I'm using coincidence occur, such as the case with the song by a popular Russian singer, a two-time Eurovision participant, Sergei Lazarev, Loving. Many listeners notice many similarities between it and the song by the renowned singer Dua Lipa, Future Nostalgia. One could have accused the audacious Russians of plagiarism again, but this time Lazarev's song was released much earlier than Dua Lipa's. Lazarev didn't file a lawsuit, and it was the right decision. I believe that Dua Lipa's lawyers would have devoured him alive. However, there are instances where Russian artists also buy the copyright and perform songs by Western stars with Russian lyrics. One such singer is Grigory Lepz. He loves to cover Coldplay songs in a Russian manner. Thankfully, he took care of copywriting issues in advance. In general, I don't find it surprising that Russians borrow melodies from the West, considering how much upheaval and regime changes the Russian people have experienced. Clearly, they had more pressing concerns than the developing of music. Meanwhile, in the West, development always progressed steadily and logically, especially after music started bringing substantial profits. Do you know of any similar cases? If so, write about them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. This was, as always, Alexander Umanchuk. See you in the next videos.